welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take a look at this, the LeeMaker Heike 960. This is a very high-end single-board computer and it's been sent to me for review by my friends at LeeMaker and Allnet. So let's go and take a closer look. So here we have our Heike 960. And the first thing to say is that this is a 9.6 board. You can see that written down there. And the 9.6 board initiative was launched by Lenaro in February 2015 to provide a single software and hardware platform for compatible ARM Cortex-A boards from multiple vendors. And this is one of the first boards under the 9.6 initiative. Now, this is specifically the Heike 960. It's a high-end development board, as I've said earlier. It comes with a, an AOSP, or Android Open Source Project image of Android and related applications on the board, pre-installed, there's some flash memory on this device. And it costs, wait for it, $239.99. This is an expensive single board computer. It's not a direct competitor to a Raspberry Pi. It's a high-end board. And you might be thinking, what do you get for that amount of money on a single board computer? Well, let's take a look inside. So if we get into the board here, if I can get in, there we are, there we are here, and uh, oh, we've got a heat sink straight away. We've very, very shiny heat sink to put on the board a bit later on, I'm sure. And uh, we get the board out, and there's always also a, a power adapter cable. I'll say more about how you power this board later on. There's an instruction manual, that's always nice to have. And here's the board itself. If we get it out, we will need to get in there. Mr. Scissors is at the ready. We will get into the little, little bag in there and uh, here we have we get it out our uh, high key 960. let's just uh, spin it round for you get some of the writing the right way up and i'll talk you through the specs and the first chip you'll see here or the biggest chip you can see is actually two chips on top of each other stacked chips here on top we've got the ram and beneath the ram we've got the system on a chip which is a kirin 960. Now this has what they call a big little CPU architecture, which means it's got four ARM Cortex-A73 cores running up to 2.3 gigahertz. And on top of that, it's got four ARM Cortex-A53 cores running up to 1.8 gigahertz. So overall, this is an octa-core CPU. This is a eight core single board computer. Now, on top of a system on a chip, we've got the RAM, as I mentioned earlier. This is a three gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at a 1.866 gigahertz. So a lot more RAM than we normally get on a single board computer, and it's DDR4. We've also got some flash storage on the board. 32 gigabytes of flash storage is here. And we've got connectivity, wireless connectivity, as you would expect. We've got the wireless chip here, and this gives us a Wi-Fi, dual band Wi-Fi, both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and it gives us Bluetooth 4.1, and there's a couple of antennas to handle all that on the board. If we turn to connectivity, we do have a micro SD card slot here, although we've also got flash memory on the board, and that supports cards up to two terabytes. Then next to that, we've got HDMI, full-size HDMI socket, HDMI 1.4, and three USB ports. Now, the first two USB ports, as you can see, are type A, and they are, as you can tell, hopefully from the color insert, USB 3 connectors, not USB 2, as we'd normally have on a single board computer. Now, we've also got USB 2 port, but it's based around a type C connector. So this is a type C USB 2 OTG port. As you can see, or maybe you can't see, we haven't got an ethernet socket on this board. There's no wired network connectivity. All network connectivity relies on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If we look on the top of the board again, you can see there are two expansion connectors. There's a 40 pin, what they call low speed expansion connector. That does include 12 GPIO pins, but there's also a 60 pin high speed connector for expansion as well. So you've got lots of opportunities to interface things with this board. But the really key thing happens when we turn this board over, because on the back of the board, yes, we see the USB 3 hub, that's not that interesting, but far more significantly, we've got this. We've got a M.2 connector, a PCIe Generation 2 M.2M connector to be exact. So you can connect an M.2 SSD to this single board computer, and that clearly opens up all kinds of possibilities. So, 
There we are, that's the Leanmaker High Key 960. I've got it the wrong way around again, not what it matters, but I'd like to be able to read the stuff on the board. So that's the basis of the hardware. Let's now think about booting it up. Right, it's now time to boot this thing up. And before that happens, I just need to tell you a few things. First of all, as you can see, I've fitted the heatsink. I imagine this get quite warm. I could imagine it could need more than just this simple heatsink, this passive cooling, but we will see. Secondly, we want to make sure it's in the right mode. This thing can boot in three different modes, normal mode, fast boot mode, or recovery mode. And if you look on the back of the board, you will see there is a tiny little switch just by the M.2 connector over here. And this switch has to be set in the right position so it's in normal boot mode when you first boot with the pre-installed installation of Android. Next thing we need to do is make sure it's connected to some peripherals. It won't just work all by itself, of course. And not least, it's going to need some power. Now, this board isn't powered by a USB connector. Like most single board computers, no micro USB power here. It's got a proper DC power jack. And this requires a connector with a 4.75 millimeter outer connector, 1.77 millimeter inner connector, sensor positive, and it needs a eight to 18 volt at two amps. And to supply that, I've gone and bought myself quite a large, quite a fancy power connector. And it's got on the end of it, one of these jacks, you can change the final connector. So I've got the connector here for this board, and I've got lots more connectors there, and I've got even more connectors over here, and you can buy even more apparently. So any single board computer, I should be able to connect to this power supply. I can review lots of single board computers with the same power supply in the future. But anyway, for today, we'll connect it to the, uh, the uh, board we've got here, the Hi Key 960. There we are, put that in there. We also need to connect, of course, into a monitor. So I've got, obviously, an HDMI lead. You would be not imagine all the amount of wiring off screen here, but there we are, connect that in there. And finally, we need to connect to a keyboard. I'm going to connect it wirelessly to this Ride K16 I reviewed not that long ago, and therefore we'll just put the dongle for that into the high key. There, I'm bound to be the wrong way up. The law of USB, isn't it? So there we are. We've got the high key down 60 all set up to be booted into Android. And so here we are about to boot into Android and the High Key 960. And as you probably heard, I pressed the power switch there. Currently we've got a black screen, but I'm sure that will change in time. And there we are, it's booting into Android. And as you can probably notice there, I'm actually recording this, which I don't normally do by pointing a camera at a monitor screen. The Hi Key 960 interface is fine with my uh, HD monitor, but it won't sadly talk to any of my recording devices. I've just bought a brand new HDMI recorder. I can record all kinds of HDMI resolutions all the way up to uh, UHD, up to 4K resolutions now, but sadly I can't record a Hi Key 960 directly. But never mind. Here we are in Android on the system, and it's a fairly clean copy of Android because of course it's a developer's copy, but it's got various things there. We can look at, uh, I don't know, the calculator. I've set the font slightly larger so we can all see. We can do a uh, nine times six, and uh, well, there we are, 54. Must be working. Go back to the uh, desktop there, I think. We can uh, probably clear things down. There we are, and uh, that's it, really. There's not a lot else to say here. This is Android running on the, uh, the high key 960. As we've seen in this video, the LeanMaker High Key 960 is a very interesting octa-core single board computer. Now, given its price point, it's not a direct competitor to a board like a Raspberry Pi. But if you want a very powerful ARM-based SPC, or if you need to do some Android development, it's certainly a board you should consider. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.